appreciate that so much. Your Bible's open. Hebrews chapter 11 tonight, if you would. Hebrews chapter 11. This morning we begin to look at faith. Faith in God Almighty. I tell you what, I'm glad to be at church tonight. I'm often encouraged, but today the Lord seemed to seem fit to, to show some special things to us at church today. And whenever you miss church, you miss out on blessings from the Lord. Our goal here is to worship the Lord and further his kingdom through the gospel. And every week we've seen folks visiting, and we're seeing the Lord work in, in unique ways every single week here. Not because we're anything special. We're just trying to be faithful to him. Trying to be a church like he called us to be a church. Trying to meet together around a central theme. That theme is Jesus Christ. Try to sing uh, things that would please him. Try to encourage each other as a church family. And I am thrilled when I see the way our church family has taken to each other. And I often am here toward the end of these services. At the very end, I'll be one of the last ones to leave. And, and sometimes you guys talk a long time here at First Baptist Church. It's a good thing. That's a good thing. Encouraging each other. Many pray for each other. Or you'll call me with burdens about someone else. Hey, did you, are you aware of this? And I appreciate all that information. Sometimes the pastor is the last one to know of when someone's going through a hardship. So don't be afraid to call the office and say, is pastor aware of this, is pastor aware of that? But I appreciate the church family and what you're doing here to support each other and to bear each other's burdens, encourage each other. I appreciate what you're doing financially for the Lord. Boy, God has been so gracious to us, and 2020 was the best year financially the First Baptist Church has ever had. In the midst of a pandemic, a global pandemic, in the midst of all that, God's people were faithful. But ultimately, God is faithful. Showed himself strong. We're looking forward to get that parking lot done out there. You've seen the upstairs. I'm praying that we have a necessity to use the balcony by the end of the year. Love that people up there because we have to. God has been so gracious to us. This year, we're, I'm asking and challenging us to focus on God or only God. Every day there will be things that will draw or attempt to draw your attention away from only God. There will be ideas, there will be beliefs, there will be distractions that seek to take your focus, to take my gaze, to take your attention from God to anything else. The devil, someone once said, doesn't have any new tricks. But he doesn't need any new tricks, does he? We can be distracted for a variety of reasons here. We get distracted when our stomachs growl. We get distracted by our phones. If you've not silenced it, I'd ask you to silence it tonight during the service. I'm not chipping at anyone, but you know as well as I do, there's some times that I believe the devil gets involved in those things that right at invitation time. You ever notice that? Right when I'm trying to give the gospel clearly, a cell phone will ring. Accident? Nah. So if you have one, I'd ask you to silence it. If it's a dis distraction, I ask you to chuck it. <laughs> Not at me. <laughs> Not at me. I'll tell you what. Distractions. In distractions, they can distract us from our walk, but they can distract us in our faith. We can get distracted in our faith at a foundational level because of what we see or hear. You know, the news can disrupt and corrupt your faith in God. The news can do that. You can be so in tune with the news that you forget that God is still on the throne. You hear a report, and it's bad, bad, bad. And all of a sudden, you're down, down, down. And you forgot that God is up, up, up. It can distract and corrupt your faith. So can social media. As long as I'm going, I'll just keep on this track right here. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all those things. They, they can be helpful. And we take advantage of them here at First Baptist Church, but they can corrupt and distract your faith. 
Boy, they can keep your mind so filled with the events around here that you forget. You forget what he's doing up here. Boy, our faith. Hebrews chapter 11, if you're there in your Bibles, beginning in verse number 1, where the Bible says, Now faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When we exercise faith, when we walk by faith, when we live in faith, we are operating in a realm that we've not seen yet. That doesn't mean we haven't seen some things before, but we've not seen things yet when we're walking by faith. I believe that I'm going to heaven one day. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior in faith and by faith, and I believe that when I die, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But I've never seen that. I've never experienced that yet. So I don't know that for sure, but I believe that. That's faith. I believe that as I honor God with my substance and the first fruits, as I give to God, that God will bless those things. That doesn't mean that he'll necessarily bless me with all things. That doesn't mean that just because I give, now I have unlimited money. But it does mean that he'll bless those things. That means when I give to the church, to First Baptist Church, and I give to missions, that God takes those gifts and he does something amazing with them. Just like he did with the boy that had just a few loaves and a few small fish. That's by faith. I put that money in the offering. I don't know exactly what will happen, but by faith I act. I believe that by faith when I live according to God's word and that I, when it says a soft answer turneth away wrath. You've been in situations where someone is angry and upset, have you not? And maybe you've had the prompting of the Holy Spirit, a soft answer turneth away wrath. And you think, you know what, no way, it's not going to work here. A soft answer will not turn away this wrath. And yet if you walk by faith, believing what God said, you know what you'll find out? That God doesn't lie. In fact, the Bible says God, which cannot lie. We walk by faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Listen, it takes faith to believe in creation. It also takes faith to believe in evolution. I wasn't there and you weren't there. But I know somebody who was there. And so do you if you've ever met Jesus Christ. He was there and he said, this is the way it is. Oh, but these scientists come and they say, no, 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 that's not the way it is. You know, the inside of us, there is something that realizes that we're not the biggest thing in the universe. Romans 1 tells us that. People can accept it or reject it, but we see the Bible says that, that by faith, that what is seen was made by things that are not seen. The world was framed by the word of God. Verse number four, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his test translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible without faith it is what without faith it is what impossible my friend a Christian it is not just improbable it is not impractical it is impossible to please God without faith but he for he that cometh to God must believe that he is we must believe that God is I love when the Bible leaves some open-ended statements. It doesn't say that we must believe God is hope, though he is hope, and he is full of hope. It does not say that we must believe that God is compassion, though he is compassion, or that God is love. It says at other places that God is mercy, that God is judgment, that God is holiness. You know what it says? You must believe that God is. Well, what is he, pastor? Yes. Yes. What you need, he is. 
What you don't have, he does. He is. <laughs> you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Lord, I thank you for your, for your word. I thank you for this time. Lord, I pray you'd help me as I speak. Lord, help me say those things that would please and uplift you. Lord, to clearly, from your word, give us some truths that, Lord, would challenge us. But your word, Lord, has to touch us tonight. Your spirit must work in this service. Lord, I'm asking for your help. Lord, help us to be good soil as we listen to your word. May we respond the way you want us to. Lord, there's so much that you want to do in our lives, and yet sometimes we reject and we resist your leading and your conviction. Lord, I pray that tonight that not be the case. Lord, thank you for bringing us here safely for all those in attendance and those under the sound of my voice on live stream. Lord, would you touch our hearts tonight? Lord, this area of faith is what we're looking at. Lord, would you convict us? Lord, help us to walk away, change, to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. This morning I preached on the essence of faith. What is faith? Faith is a confident expectation of things not yet seen or experienced. But tonight I want to look at the example of faith. We are all, we are all, there's a little bit of ring, Brother Patton. We are all an example of faith. Everyone is an example of faith. Either an example of strong faith and faith in God or an example of a lack of faith or weak faith. It's a story told about a lady in Tahiti in a village, an old lady who got saved late in life. And for some odd reason, for some strange reason, she took Christ literally at his word. Like we mentioned this morning, the faith of a child takes what you say at face value. The story goes that this old lady took the Bible and took God and took Christ at his word. You know, that'd be a good thing for us tonight, to just take Jesus Christ at his word. Some months later, one of her loved ones, a little one, fell, fell sick. Recovery was doubtful as the story goes, and she needed some ice. In this remote, tropical country, Far away from cities, ice was not a thing to be had. So she began to pray for ice by faith. You know where the story's going, don't you? She's going to get some ice. Why do you know that? Well, well, because if I'm telling it, it's probably going to happen that way, right? But even then, that doesn't surprise you because you've at least heard of people who have walked by faith, who have prayed in faith, and have seen God do it. This lady began to pray, believing that God could do what he said he would do and answer prayers. As the story I read goes, there are those in the village that, that begin to mock her or scoff her or discourage her. There is no ice to be had. It's too far away. This child is not going to make it, this loved one. As the story goes, shortly after that, there was a thunderstorm. And in that thunderstorm, it came full of hail. This lady gathered enough ice and buckets and bowls to give the loved one, the child, ice. The child was fine after that. Well, Pastor, that's just a cute story. How's your faith tonight? What story would be told about you in your life? What example of faith are you tonight? You see, I'm afraid that our faith is so small at times that we have more faith in McDonald's than we do in our maker. You can write that down if you want to. You pull into McDonald's and you go to this little, this little box and you roll down your window and you talk to somebody and you believe. You believe that they're inside that restaurant. You believe that if you tell them that you want a Big Mac, that when you drive around the building, they'll have a Big Mac for you. You're driving and walking by faith. They may not give you a Big Mac. <laughs> Welcome to McDonald's. There's little else in life that's more frustrating than getting the wrong order from a drive-thru. 
little else in life. It's a real third world problem. <laughs> or first. Friday night, speaking of this, my brother was coming to town and my wife said, well, I'll get supper. So she went to Kedoba or Qdoba, whatever you want to say. Don't argue with me, just listen to my story. <laughs> my wife ordered the meal, the family meal. It comes with steak and chicken and rice and beans. Except ours didn't come with steak and chicken and rice and beans. No, no, no. No chicken at the Howell house. Right? You get there, you, and you never, those days when they don't do that, you never check it at the restaurant, right? I mean, there's sometimes you do, and they always have it right. You always check it in those times when you get home. So here we are, 20, 25 minutes away from, from this restaurant. A family's come to town. We're in supper. My wife is starving. If you know Doreen, she likes to eat. In our house, Dad doesn't get hangry. Other people get hangry. The kids, the kids. I'm talking about the kids. You open up those boxes, and there's no chicken. You know, we said... Uh, he said, are you kidding me? Of course there's supposed to be chicken. We ordered chicken. We paid for chicken. There ought to be some chicken. We had faith that what we paid for and ordered was going to be in the bag. If we're not careful, we will have more faith in Culver's than in Christ. You can write that down as well. My friend, what's your example of faith tonight? Because I'm afraid too often we exercise more faith in those times, get more upset when that doesn't work out than our faith in God Almighty. The example of faith. The Bible speaks about faith as a child, the confident expectation of things not yet seen. You know that children like to ask questions, and it's okay to ask questions? The Bible compares faith as a child to, to enter into the kingdom. And, and children, they ask a whole bunch of questions. They can ask questions a mile a minute. Asking questions does not determine our faith as long as you're okay with the answers that God gives to you. I love what John Bishop once said. It's okay to ask God questions. Jesus asked God questions where he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And Brother Bishop went on to say that just be okay with his answer. And the answer that God gave to Jesus was silence. You ever feel like God gives you an answer of silence? I have felt that before. I felt that. I'll be honest, transparent. I felt like that. Like, Lord, I'm pouring my heart out to you. I'm crying to you from the depths of my soul, Lord, I need an answer. I need some help here. Lord, what are you doing here? I don't see it. What are you going on? And it seems, it feels, it's not true, but it feels like I'm just knocking on some wood. It's okay to ask questions. Just be okay with the answers. And when your questions aren't answered, you still walk by faith. We, we, we think that if we had the answers, well, then we could walk by faith. And my friend, I couldn't disagree more with that statement. If we had the answers, I don't think we'd walk even more by faith. Think about the servant Job mentioned in the Bible. The only offense that Job committed was that he was a righteous man. That's why he was in that predicament. And God said to Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? And from there, God allowed Satan to bring some trouble and some trial into Job's life, including the removal of almost all of his wealth, and just his house was still there, and all his children. Satan went back to God, and, and God said, Well, you can touch him, you just can't take his life. And Job had no answers at that time. And you're telling me that if God had said, by the way, Job, in this, in this, you're going to be an example for me, that that would make it okay for Job? You think that if Job had that answer, then he'd say, oh, well, why didn't you say so, Lord? Thank you. When he found out his children had all perished, you think that would just make it okay? You know what our response would be in that time? I'll tell you what, what, what the flesh of me would say. Lord, that's a great idea, but let someone else go through it. I'll pray for them. I don't want to walk through it. I don't want to travel through this. 
God never told Job what was going on. We know what was going on. We get the bird's eye view. But Job never got to know what God was doing. And don't think for a second, just because God doubled his blessings at the end of his life, that he forgot about the hardship. He had an additional seven children, right? You can't tell me. Brother Treadwell, you have more than one child. <laughs> Yikes. You, you can't tell me. That when Job had those other children, and they were the beautiful, most fairest in the land, right, talented, beautiful children, that Job said, that someone said, oh, Job, you got these children. What about your first children? That Job said, what first children? I don't even remember them now. I have these other ones. You can't tell me that for a second. You can't tell me the day he died, there was not some element of grief and sadness in his heart. Job still walked by faith. He passed the test. Having the answers would not guarantee us walking by faith. God tells us, here's why you walk by faith. Because I am. That God is, that's why you walk by faith. So you can ask your questions, you can pour out your heart, but just be okay when God says, my child, on this one, you're gonna have to trust me. Now sometimes God gives us answers and he pulls back the curtain. And boy, that's encouraging and we love that. Look what God did. But there's other times that God will have us just walk by faith and not by sight. What example is your faith? Are you example to anyone else around you? In this passage, in this particular verse, these, these verses, I see three examples. I see the story of the elders. I think it's verse number two where the Bible says, for by it the elders obtained a good report. The Bible tells us that those who have walked before us because of faith had a good testimony, a good report, or an excellent report card. God gave them witness and said, you know what? These elders, those before you, walked by faith, and I'm happy with it. God said they had a good report. It was observed to be good. If God was in this room tonight, as he is, but if he was physically in it, and he had a report card about your faith, what kind of marks would you get? Oh, I've got it. I trusted you. Yes, J.D., but what about yesterday? Well, Lord, that was a tough situation. Oh, I, I had to solve it this way. I, I, I had to do this. And, and, and Lord, you know, you can't fault me for that. What about last week? What kind of report? What would your report card look like? I see the story of the elders. Man, what a tremendous, a tremendous testimony to have. The example of faith can be a testimony to others. How you walk by faith can lead others in their walk of faith. When you walk by faith, you're able to testify by faith to someone else's faith. When you say, you know what? I don't know how this is going to work out, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able when you walk by faith, it can encourage those around you. That's what the Bible says. By it, the elders have obtained a good report. That's the point of Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith, to look at, at example after example, story after story of those who have walked by faith so that you and I say, you know what? If they did it, maybe I can too. If anyone looked at your life, would they say, Maybe I can too. Or would they say, huh, it's no different than my life. I see no faith. I see logic. I see rational decisions. Those are all gifts from the Lord. But do they see faith? We come to church by faith. By faith we come to church, do we not? We believe that God will meet with us tonight, do we not, when we come to church? We believe that something will happen at church, that by going to church, it'll please him. We walk by faith and not by sight. I see the story of the elders. Oh, but I see the sacrifice of Abel. In this, the Bible says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Interesting then, in Genesis, you have those two brothers, Cain and Abel. 
Both brought sacrifices. Both brought what they thought would please the Lord. Both brought, brought the best of what they had. But of one sacrifice, God said, this is what I want. And of the other, God said, that's not right. That's not what I desire. I don't believe that Cain set out to displease the Lord. I don't believe that Cain got up in the morning and said, you know what? I don't care what God wants. I'm just going to give him whatever I want to give him. Yet that's where it ended up, did it not? God came to Cain and said, Cain, listen, there's an issue here. There's a problem here. It's not just good enough for you and I to just give God whatever we want to give him. We need to give God what he desires, and God desires faith and actions of faith. There's that comparison, Abel versus Cain. And in faith will be compared to Cain was without excuse. The sacrifice of Abel was a witness and a testimony. You see, there's a communication from, from Abel. that even now the Bible says... And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Not only is the story of the elders, there's the sacrifice of Abel as an example of faith. That even to this day, we can look at Abel and see how he walked by faith. That he being dead, yet speaketh. Still speaks, still declares to us the example by which he did. You see, Abel's sacrifice was ultimately a picture of what, of what Jesus Christ would do on the cross for our sins. That's why God had said to Cain, that's not what I want. I need a blood sacrifice. You're going to show the, the example of my son Jesus Christ. And Cain, I'm glad for your fruit, but this is not what I need. This is not what I want. This is not what I desire. Abel shows us a sacrifice in our faith. Far past the time of Abel's life is the legacy of his faith. You see, your time on earth, you may think, well, I didn't do anything great for Jesus Christ. I had the tiny ministry and just came to church and just did this thing over here. And you may not realize that as you walk by faith that God will take your life and your acts of faith, your sacrifice by faith, and make a legacy for all time. I see this story of the elders, this sacrifice of Abel, and the statement of Enoch. The Bible says he was translated. He went right to heaven. But the statement was that he pleased God. A missionary was visiting a leprosy center in India. The morning he arrived, the residents were all gathered for a praise service. And one of the women with knobbed hands, missing almost all her fingers, partially blind, badly disfigured, raised both of her fingerless hands to heaven and said in a clear voice, I want to praise God for my leprosy. For without leprosy, I would never know who Jesus Christ is. Faith, not by sight. Without leprosy, I would be completely whole and a stranger to his grace. We walk by faith, and not by sight. A few years back, as a family, we were going through a little struggle trial. We all have them, do we not? And the Lord knows just what to bring to, to grow our faith. My son James was very young. We were praying as a family. Brother Swain, Bill Swain, was for many years here the principal on staff here at Bridgeport Baptist Academy and First Baptist Church. One time he said to me, he said, you know, Brother J.D., make sure you let your kids see God work. He said, you'll be tempted as a dad to shield your kids, your family, from all the trials and all the struggles. He said, let them see God work. He said, don't be afraid. He said, with some discretion, but let them see God work. This particular struggle going with the family, we had a family had prayed for. That night, James was praying, and he said to the Lord in childlike faith, Jesus, make it work, make it work. 
That was his whole prayer. My wife and I, after that, we talked a little bit, and I prayed. I said, Lord, we're praying that you do something here. The kids need to see you, and Lord, help, help James to see it too. He was real young then. I think it was the next day, honey, or a couple of days. I think it was the next day. Lord answered our request. Just like, boom, just like that. I love it when God does that, by the way. These long, drawn-out prayer requests, oh, boy. <laughs> Sometimes we get those, but I love when God just, okay, this is good. All right, we're done. The Lord did that. He was gracious. He doesn't always, but that, that he was gracious, and he answered that one just, boom, just like that. Going back to the family, I think it was that night devotions. He said, James, just like you prayed, Jesus made it work. I love the faith of a child. Almost like that. He didn't say this, but his body language, Dad, you moron. We prayed Jesus make it work. It's settled. Of course he was going to. What else would have happened? He didn't say all that. But he's like, oh, yeah, we prayed. Huh. And went on to playing with what he played with. Example of faith. Tonight, I wonder what your example looks like. Dads, are you an example of faith in your house? Not if you're a problem solver, not if you're good with your hands or good with the money. I'm not asking if you're diligent at work or have a, be a man of character. Those are all good things. I'm asking to, if tonight the dads, your dads, are an example of faith in your house where your kids, your spouse, your wife can say, you know what, my husband, my daddy, he's a man of faith. He walks by faith. Are you an example of faith? Moms, example of faith tonight in your house? I'm not asking if you're kind and compassionate. I'm not asking if you love your children and, and dote on your children like a good mom. And, and if you're mom of the year, and I hope you are, I hope you do all those things. But are you a mom of faith where your kids can say, you know what? My mom, my wife, boy, she's an awesome mom. She's a wonderful mom. But my mom walks with God and her faith is an example to me. You know what, moms and dads, we have to be examples of faith in our homes. Grandparents. Grandpa. Papa, Poppy, Pops, Grandma, Gma, whatever they call you, are an example of faith. I'm not asking if you spoil the grandkids every waking moment of the day as you should. Sugar them up and send them home. I'm not asking if you do the special things that mom and dad won't and you wouldn't have when you were the mom and dad, but now your grandparents you do. Though you can and you shouldn't, you have full license to do those things. I'm not asking if you have a phone fully stocked with pictures and even then you print more pictures so you're always ready to show pictures of your grandkids and that's a wonderful thing. I'm asking if you're an example of faith to your grandkids. They can look at you and say, wow, my grandma sure loves me. I love going to her house because she spoils me. No bedtime at grandma and grandpa's house. Do they say, but my grandparent, they walk by faith. They're not walking in fear. They're walking by faith. Young person, and I'm done. You're at home. Paul said to Timothy, but be thou an example of the believer. I don't care if you're five years old. You can be an example of faith. I hope you clean your room and your parents never have to ask you to clean your room. I hope you obey so quickly it, it, before they finish uttering the sentence, it, the deed is done. I hope you're kind to your brothers and to your sisters. I hope you, uh, I hope you, you do all those things and you're good at school and you, and you read well and study well and test well. I hope you do all those things. But above all, how is your example, young person, of faith? Would your parents say, would your mom say, would your dad say, my child, they're a good child, and they do well at school, and they work hard, and they're loving, and they're not perfect. But what they say? But they have a life of faith. What I'm asking is, what is your example of faith like? Or do you have more faith in McDonald's? Lord, help us. Lord, we need you. Lord, you've saved us. 
Lord, we need to be examples of faith. Tonight, with your heads bowed and eyes closed, simple question Are you an example of faith? You were here tonight and you say, You know what, Pastor, as you spoke, God spoke to me. You know, if God spoke to you tonight, why don't you slip out of your seat? Before the instruments play, before we stand, come do business with the Lord. Maybe there's some dads who need to say, you know what, I've been a, a good dad. I provided for my family like I ought to, and you ought to. But I've not been a dad of faith. Maybe there's some moms, some kids, some grandparents who say, you know what, I need to have an example of faith. May our hearts be strengthened by the Lord. Many have come now. Lord, bless this invitation. May we be honest before you, Lord, because you're the one who sees, who sees us. Lord, you know our hearts, intentions, and actions. Lord, may our lives be examples of faith. As you stand to your feet now, folks are already up here. If you need to do business with God, you come here. If you need someone to pray with you, we got folks up here who'd be glad to bend a knee with you. My friend, if you're not sure you're on your way to heaven, we'd love to open a Bible and show you how that God loves you and Jesus died for you. If you're online tonight, you can call us here. We'd love to have someone on the phone share with you from God's Word how you can have a life of faith. I don't know who holds, or I don't know what the future is, but I know who holds my hand. Thank you so much that you hold tomorrow. Lord, we don't know what a day will bring forth, but Lord, we know you're already in our tomorrows. Lord, thank you that as we walk by faith and in faith and through faith, that you will never let us down. Lord, you'll never fail us. You're unchangeable. Lord, thank you for meeting with us here tonight, for touching hearts. Lord, may this church be a pillar to your goodness and to your grace. Lord, you're so gracious to us. May we walk by faith. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.